And so to the second of the smaller parties, UKIP, the United Kingdom Independence Party. You'll have seen their purple posters around. Their leader is in the House of Lords, Lord Pearson, he joins me now. Good morning. Thank you for coming in, Lord Pearson. Um, let's go, we, we understand um, your policy on withdrawal from the EU, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But can I ask about some of the other policies that have come through so far in the mini-manifesto? Well, um, j j just, if I, if I may, first of all, on the size of the cutback that you want to see in the state. You're talking about much more drastic cuts in state spending and welfare spending than the other parties. Yes, I mean, I'm afraid the level of cuts that's being discussed by the three failed old parties simply is not realistic when you look at our financial predicament, which is a deficit of 160 billion and a debt in 2013 of 1.3 trillion. I mean, these are huge figures. And therefore, UKIP is best known, of course, for its policy of leaving the European Union. Um, and we say that, uh, I mean, the elephant in the room about this whole economic debate is the cost of our EU membership, um, which has been put by the Taxpayers' Alliance at up to 120 billion pounds a year. And, and just the cash that we hand to Brussels every year, if you take the government's figures uh, for 2008, the net cash that we send, not the gross cash, but the net hard cash we sent to Brussels was 6.6 .6 billion pounds. Now, but now, you say that's all very well, but no, just let me, that is 18 million pounds a day. And 18 million pounds pays for 600 nurses for a year. Mm. So we, we've got to put these squandered squillions, which I, I find difficult to get into that sort of context. Your own figures and your own party, however, say that you've got to go a lot further than simply, as it were, taking that saving. Yeah. And you're proposing about a third out of a lot of government uh, spending plans um, and above all in the welfare budget. And I wonder how you would take that kind of money out of the welfare budget. Would you simply uh, limit the amount of time unemployment benefit could be paid for? Would you have some dramatic new way of dealing with people on disability? How would you do that? Well, first of all, you've got to make the savings <laughs> That's right, yes. across the board but before you start looking at cutting the waste which lies behind the front line. We're not proposing to cut any front line uh, services. But we do say that only by looking at the colossal cost of the EU and, for instance, the Institute of Directors and the Taxpayers' Alliance, I mean, not wild, Eurosceptic, uh, mm. calculating um, uh, people. They, they have found an extra 50 billion, which you can't call it cuts. It's simply removing waste. So you've got your but hundred... But you're going a lot further. Your party suggests um, much, much deeper uh, cuts in that, uh, and also a flat rate of tax, I think, yes. a flat 31% yeah. rate of tax yeah. for everybody. Above 11,500 a year, yeah. Um, so um, that takes some, a lot of people out of tax and so on, but mm. overall it's mm. expensive. You want to spend more money on the armed services mm. um, and you want to spend as much money on schools and hospitals. I come back to the question, where are you going to remove the big lumps of spending to allow you to do that? Well, by leaving the European Union but you're and by following that's not enough. Yeah, and by following the, 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 the IOD and Taxpayers Alliance how to save 50 billion um, and, that's, and then by cutting waste. Um, we, 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 it, there's no doubt about it that the frontline services in this country, if you take the military, uh, apparently uh, for every two soldiers there's a bureaucrat mm. uh, in, in the Ministry of Defence. That can't be right. But, uh, and if you look at the National Health Service, it's perfectly obvious uh, that, that, that it's weighed down by um, administrative sure. costs uh, to, to, it's to just the a, detriment of the I'm, front line. I'm disappointed to hear you talking about um, you know, waste savings and reductions because it seemed to me that your manifesto was much uh, bolder. Um, well, mini-manifesto is saying you're taking a third out of welfare. Well, we, we, we don't want to alter the front line of welfare. And we believe that were we to have something like the flat tax system, were we to be set free from the crippling over-regulation uh, of the European Union and everything, the economy would respond. It always has responded. Uh, economies do respond to that sort of thing. And so we've got to get the politicians uh, and the, um, the, 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 the weight of, of regulation and, and, and complete... Um, mm. I don't use the word cut. Uh, we simply want to get rid of the massive waste. All right. Um, what about immigration? You want a complete freeze on immigration for five years. For right? permanent settlement. For permanent for settlement. Permanent settlement. How does that work if um, there's somebody the country, whose skills the country 
thinks it wants or the, perhaps somebody who's been in a particularly difficult refugee situation? Well, I mean, obviously, if, if uh, asylum, we're, we're, not, we're not touching genuine right. asylum. Of course we support that. Britain must maintain right. its reputation for that, absolutely. Otherwise, why shouldn't we be like the United States of America or Canada, Australia, New Zealand? If we want people to come in uh, to do um, jobs here and to contribute to the, the economy, then they should come in on, on a visa, on a per permit. Um, also, families, we're not thinking of axing families. We're not thinking of sending anyone away. Our freeze is on permanent settlement for five years. Uh, because and you make the point, obviously, you can't do that unless you leave the European Union. No, you can't. Right. You can't. Can I just I ask mean, leaving you... the European Union ties straight into immigration and straight into the economy. Um, can I just ask you about a story that was in, uh, in one of the papers today, um, in The Observer, um, about one of the people who, who funds you, or has funded you in the past, this chap, Henry Angust. Mm. Uh, he's uh, Swiss-born, um, and he's now putting a lot of money behind the Conservatives. I think he's... Mm. Now, you know this chap. Mm. What's he like? Well, he's he, a, and what, he's, not he's, in terms he, of his, but his political views. He's Swiss, and he's a he's a personal friend of mine. So yep. I must declare an interest there. Um, he runs a very successful organisation in the city, and uh, he is Eurosceptic. There's no doubt about it. And he has funded in the past my think tank, my Global Britain think tank. Uh, most of uh, which the activity of which goes on monitoring the BBC, you'll be pleased mm. to hear, particularly the Today programme. And I think it is the Global Britain research which forced the BBC into its uh, only, first ever independent inquiry into the balance of its coverage on the European Union. And uh, the, the independent inquiry found unequivocally that the BBC okay. was very I'm, biased in favour of the BBC. I'm now so saying about being watched yes, myself. Yes, yes, you are. Well, no, no. You're, uh, <laughs> can I, can, you're can being I, monitored. I'm being monitored. <laughs> you're uh, being monitored. I, well, I'll take that. I'll be very cautious in that I case. Would, we, we don't mind um, your programme. But, but um, just, on, just on this guy, because mm. he's, he's put a lot of money into your interests and, you know, your, your part of the spectrum, and he's putting money into the Conservative mm. part of the spectrum. Does that mean that, you know, he thinks, perhaps you think, that um, once the election's over, the Conservatives will turn out to be a great deal more Eurosceptic than they're saying in public? Well, I think Henry is someone who would, um, who would like the Conservative Party to be more Eurosceptic. Mm. Uh, and he's someone who is, I think, and there are many of my friends who are working from within the Conservative Party to achieve that. Um, and uh, I think uh, all of them uh, and the, most of the Conservative grassroots and, and us were very disappointed uh, that David Cameron did not deliver the referendum mm. on our membership of the European Union, which he promised. Do you think and it's short-term tactics, though, perhaps, rather than what's deep, in, uh, belief that, 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 in fact, David Cameron and the Conservative Party are a bit more Eurosceptic than they're letting on? Well, I, am fe I fear the leadership isn't. Right. And that is very serious, because if Cameron were to get a working majority and be in power for five years, having refused a, um, a, a referendum on in or out of the European Union, the colossal costs attached and all the rest of it, mm. um, then after five more years of integration uh, into the corrupt octopus in Brussels, we will no longer just be enmeshed in its tentacles as we are now, but we'll be in its bowels. Mm. Everything will, will have mm. gone. The City of London okay. supervision, um, justice and if, home, home affairs and so on. I mean, and it's, it's if, very if serious. You get your, if you get your first MP, which who knows, uh, at this election, could you imagine working with the Conservatives in any way if they win? Well, we'll, 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 we'll work with the right sort of Conservative, yes, right. I hope so. And, and what we want to achieve out of this election is to make it clear that no, none of the failed old parties can form a government yeah. unless they give us a referendum on the European Union. And more than that, the prize for us, obviously a hung parliament, uh, would would okay. probably deliver some form of proportional right. representation. And we want, okay. we want binding referendums, uh, national and local, on, on the Swiss indeed. model. On the Swiss okay. model. <laughs> Lord Pearson, thank you very Not much indeed for joining us. One of this year's most anticipated films is Roman Polanski's The Ghost, based on the best-selling thriller by Robert Harris.